So today I wanted to talk about E8 and how to go from E8 to the E8 to 40 quasi crystal, which is called the alpha Salon quasi crystal. And then I will talk about the 600 cell and the 200 polytope, which you know are two important um, polytope for us. And I kind of tried to try a little bit to squeeze the material <laughs> into this one lecture. Hopefully, it will be fun. Um, Okay, so first I will introduce the E8 lattice and then the Gaussian polytope. Uh, and then talk about the E8 to 40 quasi crystal. Uh, there are two quasi crystals, one is the cosohedron quasi crystal, one is the tetrahedron quasi crystal, but I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about the tetrahedron quasi crystal, although I planned here, but I'm not, I don't have time to talk about it. Uh, and then I'll talk about the 600 cell and its rings. And then the 200 polytope, there is a Russian paper that is uh, very interesting. I, I actually went through it twice because it looks really interesting. So I don't have time to talk too much about it, but in case any of you get interested in this, so you can read the paper. Okay, so E8, what is E8? So anyone know what it is, what this is? And the American history <laughs> knows this is a Cox Dinkin diagram of E8. So there are eight uh, nodes there. And then uh, let me see the laser pointer. So these are the connections between the nodes, and then and that's kind of represent a threefold symmetry there. And it, it's if it's open, it's uh, when it's open, it's twofold, right? Yeah, all right. What is open? It, like between this node and this node is open. So basically there is a 90 degree here. These can, can, you, you can see 60 degree here, 90 degree here, kind of like that, you know. That's why when we talk, well, in the year the polytope, I think you asked me for the angles, and I, the angles that I give you is kind of really to 90 degree, and also really to the 30, 60, 120, I think. So, okay, so E8 is an AD diamond lattice. Yeah, eight, you said E8? Yeah. Okay. So it's eight dimensional diamond lattice. It is, um, you know, consists of two FCC lattices translated by one quarter along the body cube diagonal. So the FCC can be thought as cubic lattice with all even dimensional facet centers not all dimensional facet, only in the even dimensional facet. In 3D, for example, it's a two dimensional facet that is centered. There's a one dimensional facet, which is the edge, but that's not centered. So that's what's called the FCC. But, but I don't understand. You're saying that you can make E8 from two FCCs? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But so each FCC is a three dimensional thing? No, no, no. It's A dimensional FCC. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just. Defining FCC itself is is a cubic lattice, but you decorate the cubic lattice uh, with uh, you know at the uh, even dimensional facets, like put the center there. That's how you get the FCC from a cubic lattice, and or we can say every other point, you know, of the cubic lattice. Okay, so the nodes of E8 are first given by all permutations of these coordinates. So you can already see there, you know, you have, of course, the permutation of this is just itself. And for this is like the, the, the face center of the two-dimensional facets. And that's the face center of the four-dimensional facets, and uh, six and eight. So all the even dimensional facet centers. And so then you, that's, that's one eight-dimensional FCC, and then you translate it by one quarter along the diagonal. So we also need the negatives of this, right? Yes, the mm -hmm. permutation of sign also. Yeah, permutation uh, of sign as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it won't get the <laughs> you won't get the whole unit cell. So That's right. I make my eight-dimensional FCC lattice by translating two 
eight dimensional cubic lattices by one half. Mm -mm. No, I don't think you can get FCC by translating another cubic lattice. You can do it in 3D though, right? Uh, I don't know. Because I know you can generate the FCC lattice by offsetting along the body diagonal to I cubic lattices. I don't know, no. Okay. Because that, you know, we, we also do it either decorate the facet or every other point in a cubic lattice. I don't think about you can shift it. You can't do it. No. You can't shift to. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so these nodes have been, uh, has been used to model the fundamental particles by Gary Lisi and then Tony Swiss, as most of you know. Um, okay, so the Gaussian polytope. The first shell of E8 has 240 vertices, with 112 of them from the set 1, I mean the set 1 FCC, and 120 of them from set 2. These 240 vertices form the Gaussian polytope. Um, so it's a coordination shell of the, co uh, the coordination shell. Uh, shell of the E8 lattice. So this is like when we talk about the represented polytope of a lattice. So it seems here they give a name of a coordination shell. So what do you mean by the first shell of E8? What is first shell of E8? Well E8 is an eight dimensional lattice. So if you start from a point you can uh, think about that this A dimension is made of uh, seven spheres. So it's like nearest neighbor. Nearest yeah. neighbor. It's, it's yeah. the same red eye from the center nearest point. Neighbor. So the first shell would be the nearest neighbors. So right. In, in other words, you, right. you, since the FCC of is one the point. maximum packing of seven spheres in eight dimensional space, the kissing number of seven spheres is uh, 240. So it corresponds to the, the kissing number in 8D corresponds to the 280 vertices of the, e, of the gossip polytope. 280? Okay. 240. Okay, so the, the Gaussian polytope is a 7D facets. Did I miss this? Okay, so, so the Gaussian polytope, they call it the coordination share of the E lattice. It is kind of the eight dim dimensional knowledge of the three dimensional cubic. The usual, it is, I said it's, it's kind of because, you know, 8D also has a cubic. Ha in, in AD, there is FCC lattice, and it also has its own coordination shell. And I think that probably will more be more of a eight-dimensional analogy of the three-dimensional cubectohedron and than the Gaussian polytope. I, I want us always to kind of juxtapose this view, mm -hmm. which is the focus on the polytope corresponding to the root vectors of the lattice, which is really the full polytope, the representative polytope. But another deep way to think about the E8 crystal mm -hmm. is to think about a tiling of eight-dimensional space with eight-dimensional <coughs> octahedra and eight-dimensional tetrahedra. And the junction of the two forms the Gaussian polytope, just like the junction of four tetrahedra in the FCC lattice forms a cube octahedron with half uh, octahedral cells and full tetra four full tetrahedral cells. So it's really totally analogous when you think about the fact that you can make the Gossett polytope by just putting together several eight-dimensional tetrahedra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so the Gossett polytope, the seven-dimensional facets are seven, uh, 17,280 simplices and then 2060 cross polytopes, which is an analogy of a cubic octahedron. All smaller dimensional facets are simplices. Do we have to remember these numbers for the quiz? Yeah. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, we have to take a quiz. There's going to be a quiz? Sure. Okay. There will be. <laughs> An ad song is a very hard. Be thing. alert. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I would try to do There's a paper. There's a paper. So on this, and then there, there's PowerPoint there. My PowerPoint would be there. So, okay. So, um, uh, 
how do we, so next is how do we get from E8 to the four dimensional quasi crystal? So there's a standard way to get there that is just using cut and project method. You know, in the E8, from the E8 lattice, and then so we, s you know, we, d we select uh, kind of like a window, four dimensional window, you know, like, uh, I mean, four a, a window that has a f that with the four-dimensional physical space and the four-dimensional perpendicular space, and then we just do a cut and project, and then, you know, and then get the quasi crystal. That's the standard way. But here I'm emphasizing on uh, using the hopeful vibration. So that's why I wanted to introduce it in the in. Uh, the hope fibration method because I feel like it's a more, I don't know, it's uh, it's a more intuitive, visual, <laughs> and then probably more important later when we talk about the rings, this you know, for modeling physics. Um, so either lattice can be decomposed into four-dimensional FCC lattices which is a 3343 three, lattice, with the complementary lattice also being 3343. Three, three. So imagine, uh, just, like, just like a cubic, um, a, a two-dimensional square lattice, right? It can be thought of as uh, made of like a one-dimensional, um, I don't know, what do you call cubic, a one-dimensional periodic lattice, and then Horizontal and then the perpendicular one is also like you know so up here. Cross, like yeah, cross, cross each cross other. Cross. Yeah, so they're perpendicular to each other. Basically, if you choose this as a projection space, which we call physical space, also, and this would be the perpendicular space. This space would be the space that you're gonna be uh, after the projection. It, it they will be gone. Okay. So, so its coordination shell. For this lattice, its coordination shell is 343, three, which is a 24 cell. So is, is that a Shafley notation? Or does the coordination yes. shell mean something else? It's Shafley. Yeah, it's, it, these are the symmetries. And it's so the Shafley notation for the honeycomb with one more number. Honeycomb? What is that? The 343, three, it's three, a honeycomb. Three. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by honeycomb? Honeycomb. So it's a honeycomb. So the 24 vertices of the uh, 24 cell are inscribed on the three sphere in S3. So the 24 uh, is, uh, so we're talking about the coordination shell of this lattice, which is a 24 cell. 24 cell has 24 uh, vertices, and these vertices um, land on a three, dimension, three sphere in a four dimensional space. So basically, they are the same uh, radius from the center. Yeah, it's a regular polytop. So what is a three sphere in a four dimensional space? So you know the two dimension two sphere in a three s uh, in a three dimensional space when we have a sphere, we talk about this the, the sphere, the surface of the sphere. Mm -hmm. That's a two dimensional thing, right? right. It lives in three D. Yeah, so that's called a two sphere. Okay. So the surface. So that is the surface in in the four D. In four D. Yeah. So that's why it's a three dimensional surface. Yeah, three -dimensional space. Yeah. yeah. It is a three dimensional space, curved three dimensional space, but lives in four D. Okay. So the two hundred forty vertices of the Gaussian the polytope are inscribed in a seven dimensional hypersphere, S seven. And they can be split into equivalent subsets of this three, four, three. So basically, these uh, these vertices that lives on a seven sphere, which lives in eight D, they can be separated or splitted into little three spheres. So every twenty four of them become a three sphere, and then so there are ten ten of them. So so. 240 vertices of the Gaussian the polytope can be split into 10, 24 vertices that live on the three sphere. So I can Understand? build that out of 10 cubot. I can build that out of 10 cubot. 10. Um, 24 cells. 24 cells. Yes. Yes. I cosy the tracker. Okay. With 24. Okay. Cool. 
<laughs> okay. So it's really nice, right? It's equivalent. So the Gaussian yeah. polytope is equal to 10 to 24. Seconds. Yes, yes. And they each be, they each, okay, so each of these being a three sphere which does not intersect the nine others. So it's like the spheres, like, like, the, like the circles, they do this. They don't, like, you know, you have a circle like this, you have another circle like this. They don't intersect with each those other. Are the, those are the discrete Hope fibers. Right, right. So it's, so it's like discretized Hope. So the 1024 cells are a, sub, a discrete subspace of the infinite Hope vibrations that run around the seven the Yeah, seven but yeah, right. the vibration of S7 right. on S4 by S3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So and uh, what is well known is the vibration of S3 on S2 by S1, which is Villarso circles. And the mm -hmm. Villarso circles are what you uh, Right. I think these are the only two hope of vibration, right? Well known. And there is another which is S15. S15? Yes. Okay. S7 and okay. So yeah. So this is interesting. So it's yeah. S3, S7, and S15. Yeah. So S3 is the irreducible? Why or can it also be split? S3 can be S3 split can by be S2 and S1 like uh, Ray just so mentioned. But the, those I, I will talk about how to how to do this S3 later. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the the answer is yeah, you can keep you can build E8 out of lower dimensional things even lower. You can build the whole gossip polytope out of just a bunch of equilateral triangles. Or yeah, but he's talking about the hope of vibration, though, oh, which, right. which it does not apply to every dimension. But, uh, because you can build the 24 cell out of octahedra, and then mm -hmm. you can put, can you have spheres on the octahedra? Well, we will talk spheres. about this later on the S3, like how to, how to do the hope of vibration there. So I'll cover it in the end. So hope vibration, what is the me methodology? What, what is it? It's yeah. It's it's like it's you split the you split this object into this uh, s like rings, s rings right. or spheres that don't intersect with each other. Like so is that like applicable any time you can do that, or does it only apply to E8 and? It only uh, like uh, so it only it can oh, you can only do it for S3, S7, S15. I don't know about the yes. other. Well, why can't I apply to the? Why can't I take a S2 and then build it out of an infinite number you can't. Of, of rings? There's no, you can't. But can't because S2 is already, S2 is already just two-dimensional sphere. You just can't, you can't separate into them into circles that don't intersect with each other, for example. They, they, well, they, yeah. they, if I have a sphere and then I just keep wrapping an infinite number of circles, yeah, but those, those are not the great sphere uh, circles. You can't do like a, a small a small circle and then bigger circle like that. No, no, so not the not circles that, not that. So I have circles of the same size, and I have one circle they around. Intersect. But they intersect. That's, That's the thing. Not, they, they shouldn't intersect. Right. Yeah. Hope oh, fibration don't intersect. Okay. The, the sphere which is a fiber should be a parallelizable okay. sphere. Yeah. And it should have the dimension of a division algebra minus one. Okay. So it can, could only be 7, okay. 3, or 1. Got it. Mm -hmm. 7, yeah. 3, or 1. Okay, so that is nothing other than uh, taking a discrete version of the whole fibration of S3 with fibers of S S7 with fibers of S3 and then in the base of S4. So I mean these, all these little three spheres, if you shrink them into a point and they live in S4, in the, in, on, on an S4. Forty dimensional sphere. No, 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 okay. So I thought the fibers in S three and base of four D space. What are you saying? And base S four. S four would be five D yeah, space. Yeah, is for is in five D. So yeah, it is in five D. Yeah, it is in five D. But I thought you said at the top and at the end of point one, the twenty four vertices of the twenty four cell are inscribed in the three sphere in four D. Yes, yeah, the S three is in four D, but the S four is in five D. Yeah, because it, when no, you I understand that, but the last sentence this this is E eight when you split E eight into four four dimensional space, but this is to split 
a, a seven dimensional sphere into three spheres that lives on three dimensional the sphere. fourth I mean, eight dimension. dimensional sphere. Seven sphere. It's a yeah, seven, seven sphere. sphere. Yeah. It lives in AD, but it's a yeah, still seven. Mm -hmm. And base is four. So I don't understand why it should be base as four. You, you, you have to add the dimension. It, it does. It does. It, it, it is because, oh. yeah, I mean, because, because this looks like a seven. It's a curve, this seven dimensional space, but it's a still eight dimension, you yes. know. So, so when so because we're not talking about the, the Euclidean spaces, so we're talking about the curved space. So when you have a curved space in seven D, and then yeah, these two has to add up to seven. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about the curved, because this is a four dimensional curved space. It's no longer the infinite five dimensional space. It actually is a four dimensional space in this. It lives <laughs> in five D, but it's still a four dimensional curved space. And what is the meaning of the word base then? <laughs> um, like, like, like these these three spheres. Like, if you also if you shrink them into little points, they live on this S the four. So they the they become a point. Each become a point on S four. S four. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> understand. Uh, okay, so. Each um, fiber, you know, the 434 fiber of the Gaussian polytope generate a 3343 four dimensional sub lattice of E8. So just think of this is like 24 cell, and that each 24 cell you can generate, expand it into a four dimensional lattice. It's clear that there are 10 such. Uh, <laughs> equivalent sub lattices passing through the origin because there are 10 24 cells, right? Okay, so labeled by the 10 points in the base S4. Okay, so basically, there are 10 points on S4. Each point can correspond to a 3343 three, four dimensional lattices. Okay. Consider the point in the base S4 with the coordinate this. Okay? So this point is not one of the 10 points, but just consider a point in the base S4 with coordinate 1 over square root of 5, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It's equi equidistance to 5 of the 10 base space vertices of the Gaussian polytope. So there are 10 points, and this point is e equidistance to 5 of these 10. And then uh, also the other five of the ten, but the, the five of them are closer; the other five are farther away. Are the, the, the base points just the coordinate vectors? Yes. Mm -hmm. one, one. Yeah. Yeah, with this point. So, um, so it's equidistance to five of the ten base spaces vertices of uh, base space vertices of the Gaussian polytope, and add another equidistance to the rest of five. Okay. Uh, that's important because that's how we will get the five-fold symmetry from E8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this 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 <coughs> this this point this point is really important because yeah, like Ray said, that's how we got the five-fold. So two questions. So the 4D sub lattice. What's the name of that lattice? That's that's the. D4. That's the that's three, 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 four. But this is D4. <laughs> <laughs> it's D, D, it's D, D4. It's, it's also A. Is this the same as A4? No. No? No, no, no it's different. Mm. So, okay. um, so it's a honeycomb. I'd love to understand how A4, what A4 is, how it's different than D4. I thought. I thought it's a four FCC, though. Whatever, even if it's a D4, it's still FCC. It's still D4 the, FCC. yeah, it's the even dimensional facets that decorate See, right, it. Because in some dimensions, the A, the A lattice is the same as the D yes, lattice. Yes, in three dimension, A3 but is D3. But not, not in 40, in they're, not, they're not the same. No. Okay. And my not in, uh, in all the other dimensions, they are not the same. Okay, and then my next question, you have to go back to the where you left off on your slides. Uh, I'm going back. This is I mean, going back. My question was where you last 
left off this where is, I interrupted this is. you. No, you were, you were beyond that. Okay, so, my, no, you passed it. Your last, yeah, you were, you're on this page. Okay. So, my next, my last question then is, so this is really interesting. So, so E8, even without projecting it to the 4D quasi-crystal where we get all of our golden ratio aspects of the 600 cells that are projected scaled by the golden ratio. So this indicates that E8 is deeply related to the square root of 5. No, but this is a, what we picked. This the point is what we picked. If we don't pick the point, then... But the points are there, meaning a, a well, fundamental sub-relationship. Well, so, uh, well, everything going to be relative to this point when we map to the five-fold symmetry. Only if we map to that point. That point is like, it's a stereographic mapping. It's like everything traced towards that point, you know. It's like if you twist it to another point, you won't get the fivefold symmetry. So that's crucial. This is like a pick a projection direction kind of thing. But so it's not implied in the EA. No, lens. it's not. Oh, but but it's kind of yeah, it's it, it is right. It's a symmetric point. Yeah, this point is kind of highly symmetric in some way relative right. to the whole vibration. And the S4 is deeply implied in the E8 as we talked about constructing it from 24 cells or S4 base subspaces. So it's just nice because I had always kind of thought, okay, well, E8 really doesn't have the golden ratio implied as much as the projection does. Mm -hmm. But here it is without any projection. You have yeah, I mean, they even course. have the the kind of phi angle in it. So that we, yeah, that part I knew about. Yeah. It, but that was a more complicated phi angle. Mm -hmm. Hebrew, this is a more, yeah. this is like this. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Part. Like, a, if you look at the whole fibration, you kind of realize why, why did they even pick yeah. this specific uh, projection? To, be, to create yeah. the Elster Sloan. Uh -huh. Because like it's, it's not just yeah. ar arbitrary mm -hmm. by any means. Right. Okay, so uh, mapping the Gaussian polytope of the four-dimensional space, uh, the Gaussian polytope of the four-dimensional space E, perpendicular space, defined by point P, uh, will then result in two sets of uh, five uh, tw tw 24 cells. So th this five, this five 24 cell, this five 24 cell, and then each of them form a 335, which is a 600 cell. So it forms our small, six, small 600 cell and big 600 cell in the also salon quasi crystal. But that golden ratio, the, the size are golden ratio to each other. Okay, so, so E is the physics space for the four dimensional quasi crystal, and then the orthogonal space E prime corresponds to the po point prime opposite to P on S4. So basically, so by opposite, I understand it as like, um, you know, there's, there's horizontal and there's a vertical kind of thing in the S4. Because these two four dimensional space that correspond to the point that is that are opposite to each other. It's like, it's like when, when you projected to like stereographically projected to a point that is on more like a horizontal and the other one is the the vertical it's not like on the sphere okay the point is here and this is, is the opposite the pole oh, yes, uh, this is the opposite this is the point with the negative coordinate p prime yeah but you're right uh, but because you are making a stereographic projection, mm -hmm. it will become perpendicular. So the coordinates of the P are actually literally just n one's uh, one's p one's all plus, the other one's all negative. Yes. I mean, one's all positive, the other one's negative. But when you do the stereographic projection, they become perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so I tried to, to understand that. I, I cannot understand that very it's easily. <laughs> okay. But it's because of the stereographic projection. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Mm. Magic yeah, I mean this 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 this, this, this part is very counterintuitive. Uh huh. It's yeah, because it's an, it's not like in three D. Like if you imaginary imagine it, it's hard to 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 kind of 
intuit this part, it's, it's not going to be on the quiz. <laughs> Can you describe using diagram? Describe this using thinking diagram? Well, it's a hope of vibrations. I don't know. Can you? Because thinking diagram is more. Yes, it's made by uh, it's, uh, the work made in uh, Deschamps paper. Deschamps no, no, paper is induction. Uh, this is going the other way. Projection. And the uh, cookie, cook, cook. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, did, but they didn't talk about the hope of vibration, though. They talk about the cut and more of the, I feel like a cut and project or orthogonal projection kind of thing. No, but they say that it's hot vibration, but they don't give uh, all the details that we have. Here. Oh yeah, because because they 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 kind of sprout it out like a fiber, like open up a fiber yes. kind of thing. Okay. I'm just uh, suggesting the Dinkin diagram because then it becomes easy. Otherwise, to me now mm -hmm. it's easy. So more easy to understand with the geometry. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of easy. Yeah. Like this. Anyway, so let's continue. Uh, the shell by shell construction of the quasi crystal. This is how they build it. Uh, you know, using hope vibration, you build it shell by shell instead of uh, the cut and project. You just get everything all at once. So, okay. So there are two orientations. That one is the H um, for the for the hope mapping. One is called the crystal. The other one is the quasi crystal. So for the crystal orientation, uh, the E8, so the E8, you know, it's, 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 a, it's maintains its original orientation, but for the Q orientation, we actually rotated the E8 in such a way that the four dimensional plane, which H maps onto P is now H, H map means hope map onto the point one zero 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 one. So it's like, Remember that coordinate one over square root of five and then one 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 one. So we so that's a point in original E8 lattice, and then we have to rotate the E8 such that that point would map into this point on S4. So so after that, um, so then let P be the stereographic map onto R4 of the point P. P will then be the first layer, first the shell of the four-dimensional quasi-crystal. So P is the stereograph stereographic map onto R4, which is the four-dimensional space of the point P. So point P on S4, um, I, I think I mixed, I messed up, uh, maybe I mixed up. I think this should be the small p. Yeah. So the point, the point on the S4 that mapped onto. Uh, small p, but because you have a point. Uh, yeah. But, but each point, <laughs> yeah, but each point corresponded to the whole uh, 24, you know, 24 cell and then the a whole four dimensional lattice. So that when that is a stereographic, the mapped onto uh, the uh, using using this orientation, and then so then it, it's kind of like what we talked about before, the first the five points, and then would be because they're same distance to the point that we pick, and then you map the first the five point to the s smaller 600 cell because the first the five point each of them re re represent a 24 cell and that can be expanded into a four dimension lattice so so then we have the small 600 cell and then we have the big 600 cell from the next five point and then we have the rest of the lattice right so uh, okay go back mm -hmm. so p what does p stand for again P is the is the point. Um, it's 
It's the point, one, of, one over square root of five, uh, one, 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 you know that point? And that point got rotated into this new point, so the coordinates are changed, so we, so we, we, we don't have to worry too much about that, but yeah, that, that's the point P. But all these other points on the S, remember the S4, there are 10 points, all of them would be kind of mapped into these points in stereographically. So, okay, and so more or less, okay, you're saying that you have a crystal orientation which corresponds to your 24 cells? No, I'm not talking about that. Crystal orientation means like, just, uh, uh, this is when, I think this is when we change the coordinate, like the original, so, so, yeah, the, it's still the same lattice, so, so the C orientation is the E8 lattice, the Q orientation, we kind of rotated the E8 so that, you know, that point okay. that we pick rotated okay. to this point. So can I think about it, is it okay if I think about it as though the one orientation is a sort of rational orientation of the lattice, yeah. where if you projected it, you project it to a lower dimensional crystal, crystal. and the other one is essentially the projection to the Elsner and Sloan mm -hmm. quasi-crystal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and this just helps you to look at all of that through the, through the formalism of Hope vibrations mm -hmm. and, map, and the mapping. Okay. It yeah, so this is the whole big picture. You start from E8, and which is made of the seven spheres, and then from the seven sphere, and it, the seven sphere can be sort of as, you know, sets of uh, three spheres, and then which lives in off, on a four sphere. So the base four sphere, and this is, you know, each point on this uh, base four sphere is a three sphere. And so here you needed to kind of pick an acceptance domain, like you can, you need, because there are so many fibers, you need to only select the ones that we want. And so we select the ones that we want, and then, um, and then um, hope for my hope for mapped uh, on you know to the point that we pick, and then so to get the four dimensional quasi crystal. And then from the four dimensional quasi crystal, we have all the three spheres, and then each three sphere. Uh, okay, so each three sphere. Uh, each three sphere here is already a 24 cell. I don't know what it's talking about. It's here. But anyway, so for the three sphere, I will talk about later, it can be uh, also hopeful uh, fabric, hopeful mapped, uh, hope uh, split it <laughs> into circles, so which is a one sphere that lives in on a two sphere. Okay, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. You start with the E8, uh -huh. and you take one of those shells, mm -hmm. an S7, yeah. and the points lying in that S7 are um, arranged in such a way that they're arranged. Split it into little, oh, okay, like, three spheres. Fibers? Yeah, three right, okay, yeah, spheres of fibers. fibers. Yeah. Each fiber is like S three. three, and and then yeah, and yeah, then yeah. and then if you treat and then if you think each S three as a point, and then that and those points will be living on the four sphere, mm -hmm. and there are yeah, ten so of them. The yeah, there are ten so of them. You quotient out all the things in the S four, and then from S four you start project to R four. Uh huh. Right. Okay. You yeah. Do this for each shell in dimension? Right. You, you, we're gonna be doing it for the whole E8 and not the whole E8, but but we have a accept acceptance domain. We have to select. So then we're gonna be learning like you know a fiber that either the f either it's selected or it's rejected. You cannot kind of get like have only partial fiber there, like for the three sphere. You don't get partial. Either you get the whole fiber, or, or you don't get at all. So, so that's how you select. So I know I know that I can build <coughs> the maximum packing of spheres in three dimensions from sets of the maximum packing of spheres in two dimensions. 
Mm -hmm. And I know that you can build the maximum packing of spheres in eight dimensions with the maximum packing in seven dimensions, and you can build that from six dimensions. But I haven't heard mm -hmm. if it continues through five, you know, five, four, but I assume it continues all, all the way up. And it sounds like that's really another way to think about the acceptance domain, because I can't just build, uh, I just, if, I, if I have my three-dimensional sphere packing made of a bunch of one-dimensional sphere packings, it's not, there's only a certain slice of the 1D, of the 2D sphere packings um, that are accepted in, in that. So in other words, I can take A2 lattices or, pack, or packings of circles on the plane and I can take one set and line it up, and then another set rotated by the first by our cosine one quarter, and I could sort of build the three dimensional. Yeah, but the acceptance domain is more like a from a higher dimension you know, lattice. When you go to the lower dimensional lattice, you don't want to include all the higher dimensional lattice. You have to select a part of it. The subspace. Yeah. So Otherwise, you're gonna get be having a dense two, oh, okay. like a dense so structure. So it's like the rules for your subspace selection. It's a cut. It's the cut and project the okay. cut part. You select a layer, okay. but instead of a that kind of linear here, you select the 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 kind of layers like each each you select a whole whole fibers okay. based on I think the radius of the fiber based okay. you know like. Like more of like the the spherical layers, okay. yeah. Instead of like a linear kind of uh, acceptance domain, here you select just like you know and in so S four you select. Uh, so a fiber, just to repeat, because I think that's new terminology for a lot of us. A fiber then is an n minus one. Circle. So if I have if I have a three sphere, then a fiber of a three sphere is a two sphere, right? A fiber of a uh, three sphere, yeah. it's a one sphere. It's a circle. Oh, so the fiber uh, so so the fibers are always one sphere. One sphere. So even if even for an eight sphere, my fibers are one sphere. No. <laughs> there is no a sphere. Is you can't hobo fabric uh, a sphere. sphere. Right, but but you you don't ho there is no hope of fibration for that. Not for the eight, for the seven. Only for seven, three, only three, four. Uh, yes, yeah. You can yeah. only fibrate uh, seven, okay. three, one, and uh, fifteen. Does it end at fifteen? Yes, it ends. I mean, then no because matter, no matter it's demonstrated yes by a theorem. Oh. Because uh, the f the fiber should be a parallelizable sphere, and the biggest parallelizable sphere is S seven. Oh. And this is linked by because S7 is a unit of the octillion, which is a division algebra. Oh. But uh, S S5 S15, which will be the next candidate, yeah. is a unit of the uh, selenium, uh, which um, is a uh, next algebra, but which is not a division algebra. It has zero divider, okay. and so the sphere is not parallelizable. Mm. So, does, does, this have no does this have something to do with E8 being the largest exceptional leader? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, 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 just as you guys know, that Ray is going to talk about the division algebra. Okay. It's a part of this lecture okay. theories. So, okay, so to you know, I I don't want to go into too much into too much of this, but just wanted to point a few things out. Like we can we can talk about this later, um, you know. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to point out that for reasons of symmetry, whenever a point is selected, a point meaning like uh, in in, okay. So so okay, I wanted to introduce the acceptance domain though still. So in the cut and project scheme, a point in a higher dimension lattice is selected whenever its projection onto a perpendicular space E prime falls inside the so-called acceptance domain, which is the cut window. So as in Elsa Salom, um, we first take the acceptance domain as um, the mapping of the Voronoi uh, domain of E8. That's also how e, uh, Julio used to generate the four-dimensional quasi crystal from E8 lattice. He uses the Voronoi domain, and I think Dan also used it when he does the from project from the A2 or Z2 to the one dimension to get the Fibonacci chain. 
So it is the complex con convex hull of 335 uh, and uh, 533, so for the 48. And so here, for reasons of symmetry, whenever a point is selected, the whole fiber to which it belongs is also selected. When otherwise, you know, it, it will break the kind of symmetry that we already set up for. So whenever, uh, moreover, the, you know, do you understand? Because, because all the points on the same fiber would be the same distance to the right. point that we still so project the, the to. So asymmetric and arbitrary to not include all of right. everything on that mm -hmm. fiber. Okay, so moreover, and except for the cases discussed below, the above hor horizon shells made of fibers sharing the same x zero value, you know, vertically, if there is a horizontal fiber, are kept all immediately rejected. This statement is exact when a acceptance domain is a spherical three sphere in the um, perpendicular space. So basically, the, the acceptance domain is in the four dimensional space, which is this. Um, so uh, I remember the cut and project in 2D rise. So just to refresh your memory, you know, like there is. We do a cut and project. Look, this is a physics do physical domain, but then there is this. This is um, perpendicular space, and so we needed to select in the perpendicular space. You know this kind of um, this um, this subspace of this perpendicular space for it to be the acceptance domain. So here the same thing. So basically, this is the E prime, right? So in the E prime. When you select the acceptance domain, it is it is a three-dimensional fiber. So this is what it said. So the acceptance domain is a spherical S three shell in E prime. So it's it's an, it's 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 a it's a it's I think it's it's a three-dimensional shell, but with certain distance. So I mean certain thickness. So here, here some care must be taken for shell who's really well. Let's let's not let's worry about that later. <laughs> so let's talk about the some of the you know uh, tricky stuff in selecting the shells so when they build up the their quasi crystal and then when they c compare with uh, the result that Elsa Salon did with the standard cut and project. Um, so. And so anyway, so for a given E8 shell, whenever the small, smaller shell also graphically mapped onto E prime is a 600 cell, it is always selected. So this is what I want you to remember. Otherwise, it could be rejected. So yeah, so for a given E8 shell, if it is also graphically mapped onto the perpendicular space as a 600 cell, then it must be selected. Otherwise, it could be rejected. So they check the up to the 20th layer. That is always true. And so, and compared with the also salon quasi crystal. Okay, so one thing that I want to point out uh, about the four dimensional quasi crystal is it's a fractality that, that I noticed in uh, kind of finding the 600 cells in the four-dimensional quasi-crystal. So we know that in the four-dimensional quasi-crystal, it's made of the 600 cells. So it's kind of like you have many, many 600 cells. Um, and then um, and I was trying to find all of them. And then for each of them, I plotted as a sphere there, like this. And then it's interesting that like, when I see the distribution of the 600 cells, if I, and then their arrangement also form another 600 cell. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, this, and if we, and if we make this big 600 cell a point and find all of them, there will be another 600 cell. So it's that kind of fractal nature there. I have a mathematical notebook that shows this. These, these points are the vertices of the 600 cell. Sure. Is this like a 3D slice of the 4D QC? 
No, this is um, this is just a this is the four dimensional uh, quasi crystal, but viewing in three D projection. You think can think of it as a projection oh, kind of thing. This is a projection. Uh huh. So, so it's kind of like a slight uh, projection. <laughs> anyway, so uh, anyway, I, I have this uh, I have this mathematical notebook here if you want to play with it. So if we don't show the 600 cell vertices, these will be the 600 cells. And uh, these are the small 600 cells. I think these are the so small 600 cell radius. Uh, yeah, so these are the small 600 cells. They don't really intersect with each other. They don't really overlap. But just the big ones overlap. Yeah. Hey guys, pay attention. I'm trying to give you some information. <laughs> so these are the 600, uh, smaller 600 cells, Duke, especially for you, yeah. uh, in the four-dimensional quasi-crystal. They don't really intersect with each other. The, okay. The 600 cells? The small one. Right, the small 600 cells. Uh -huh. and then yeah. The big so ones. if you see the big 600 cells, I didn't show the big, the big 600 cell. And then they actually intersect with each other. So let me see the number of a big. Uh, and, sh and then how they intersect is really important because those are the letters or characters they intersect so in seven ways and then kiss. And so one. you can see these big sectoral cells, they severely intersect <laughs> with each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so the, but the small ones don't. Okay. So the bigger ones intersect in any number of ways. It's seven, seven, ways. Yeah. seven ways and then kiss in one way. So there's eight relationships of the big ones. Yeah. Okay. So so that's that's a one. Uh, okay. If I show the vertices of the big center cell, you can see. Yeah. So that's a big six hundred cell, and the pink one, the small six hundred cell. The yellow point are the vertices of the big six hundred cell. You can see. But if what I what are the yellow ones? The the vertices of of the big six hundred cell. So if you can see, you know, if I show more six hundred cell, they totally intersect with each other. But the small ones don't. Can you hide the pink ones? Just for just to show this, please. Sure. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So that's one of the intersections. Yeah. So then you can see, you know, they, they, they intersect in many different ways, eight different ways. Yeah. Uh, but do, are, uh, I don't know if the eight are. Do you think the eight are? There is. There is. Because these all might be the identical intersection. No, yeah. no. I, I'm showing all of them. They're all. All, all of them, okay. big six hundred cells. Yeah. Anyway, so. Okay, so that's the. So they have different uh, distance between them, their center. Or yeah, different that's distance between. The mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay, so, six hundred cell. Itself is a three sphere. You know, it lives on the three sphere, the vertices, and I want to talk about its rings, which is a kind of a hope of vibration of the six hundred cells. So here, just give you uh, a picture of the hope vibration. These points um, belong to the six hundred cell, so there are one hundred twenty of them. So they can be one hundred twenty vertices can be split into another ten fiber, each made of twenty. No, another uh, 12, <laughs> 12 fiber, each made of 10 points. So there are decagons. Look at this, this one. So it's a decagon. It's, it lives on the one sphere. And then so, but if you shrink each of the sphere on t uh, in, into one point, and those points would be living on a two sphere. So I wanted to also. How many decagons? 30? No, 12, 12 decagons. Yeah. 12 decagons? Yeah, oh. because because so you can make you make our twenty group twist with six decagons. Decagon because we have one hundred twenty vertices, so decagons are ten vertices, so there are twelve of them. Cool. And every three of them together can form a tetrahedral ring. So I will show you uh, in a moment here. Three yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it has to be a certain neighbor, huh? Because there are 12 of them. Yeah, only 12, so 30 tetra rings. I can't help but notice 
if you can make our 20 group twist with six decagons and it has 60 vertexes, it seems that you can make the 120. Well, what can you say it again? Uh, I can't help but notice that uh -huh. you can make our 20 group twist with six decagons and, uh -huh. that, and we have 60 vertices. Mm -hmm. And then with the with the six hundred cell, you have twice as many vertices right. and twice as many. Decagons. But they don't intersect, though. Right, you have to do it with intersection there. But I wonder yeah. if there's some relationship, of yeah, relating the two. Yeah, in that could way. be, could be. It's kind of like a. I wonder if there's a way to, Amrit. So you're not working on anything that would lead to relating the the algebra of the twenty group twist to the six hundred cell, no. are you? Not, not. Okay, because Ray, that seems like that could be something that might pop up where the six, if you can construct both objects with decagons in a similar way where it's the even distribution of decagons around the surface of a sphere, then... Okay, anyway, so we can talk about that project later. So you can see there are 12 of these decagons. And then they're, they, they're per perpendicular ones. For example, this one and this one are kind of perpendicular to each other in a way. Let's see. Which one? This, this uh, magenta, yeah, and this red. Oh, perpendicular. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you see? have six perpendicular pairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, so it's. Probably if you, if you split this, six that you need for the 20 yeah mm -hmm. yeah anyway so these are the rings and then so then I actually I can uh, so like I said the neighboring three can form um, whoever said <laughs> the neighboring three rings can can form a tetra ring you can see right so this tetra ring is made of this one two three kind of those decagons uh, and if I click no show, okay, I can't click no, no show. Anymore. So that's a tetra ring, and so we can have uh, thirty, uh, twelve tetra rings total. But a given tetra ring is using all of the twelve. No, three, three of them, three, three. sets of them. Three. Yeah, and so then we had this idea of. Uh, we can we, we can show more set, but it just it will look kind of uh, you know can see see there is another one that intertwine with each other. Yeah, you can see other ones that there's another one here. So so, so we remember uh, we were, you were saying it's like a it's like a Mobius strip. Yeah, it three is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three made of three helices. Yeah, and then we can show all of them. But okay, so then we were thinking, oh, okay, so if we wanted to model like 20 group or 57 group as a work walking particle, what it look like, so this is why I made this. So Ray wants to, to make a ring on <laughs> this <Yeah>. shape. <laughs> so this is a 20, 57 group basically, 57 group made of 57 tetrahedron with one tetrahedron at the center and then uh, one that uh, each vertex, you know, is around the twenty tetrahedron. So, okay. so then you can see how the fifty-seven group can walk <laughs> along a ring. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So is this is this, um, are all those tetrahedron uh, regular in four D? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. yeah. It's just like. I, I think a Dugan can make it look nicer. It's just like for me, when I pick a, a direction to project it, I just pick one, you know? Like, I don't know, like if you can change the direction in the same time, it will, it will make it probably look nicer. And this is a good time to repeat the often repeated thing that the way that those tetrahedra are rotated from one another is how we rotated in 3D. It's 15.522 plus 60 degrees rotated into the next spatial dimension. So you just take one, select any tetrahedron, and then the next one is rotated, the kissing, mm -hmm. the one kissing the face by arc cosine one quarter. Fun, right. I have a question, so this is new to me. So these 
these, these kind of three-sided Mobius strips that are rings of 30 tetrahedra, uh -huh. if I select one edge, so it's basically three Yes, there's a triality there. Three <laughs> helices that are inter-nested, mm -hmm. but I always pictured each helix as sort of twisting, but now I'm learning that each, it's not twisted, but there's three of these things, three of these lines, but you're saying it's just a regular non-distorted circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, th so only in four dimensions, so... So it's like it's like this, right? It's three. Yeah. It's it's a hope vibration because they're mm -hmm. not. They touching. are. Okay, they so are. three of those makes a tetrahelix of thirty, mm -hmm. and they're just little. They're just regular old circles. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So the, this is from S three to S one and S two. Okay. All right. So oh, I think there is another one that I, I think I wanted to show. Yeah, so this is just like, you know, Kli once asked me to look at it. Uh, in physics, they, they discovered this kind of hope fabrication, like in experiment, basically. Oh. Yeah. What, what was that? What, 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 what it's a magnet. It's a magnetic, mag field. magnetic field. Yeah. So they found hope vibration looking things in magnetic fields? Yeah. Did they make really? I wouldn't suspect it's magnetic field. Well, this is their measurement, you know, this is what they measure, this is what they, you know, they think they, they, they're supposed to be, and so, like, kind of looping like that, you know, and then they have some, probably some simulations and some, uh, their conjectures, I guess, but, but they did kind of show this part. Yeah, I've seen some stuff where they've shown experiments with rings and knots, like trefoil knots in water. Okay, so so the next is couple of slices uh, I want to mention about the Gerardesis theory, uh, because I mentioned about the rings before, uh, these, these rings. So, you know, the reason I was interested in this um, is because I found this kind of connection with uh, Gerardesis theory. So he also uses the rings. Um, he uses a fiber because for him, see this is a one electron fiber and he talked about the, the charge and is like a charge, uh, a charged particle. So each, ch uh, did, did I mention here? Um, yeah, the charge equals to kind of the the amount of um, twist. twist. Yeah, I think he used. I don't know if he used the word twist. Mm. How fast the particles by the twist around the circle is equal to its electric charge? Where is that? Bit down. Yeah, to the right of the thing now. Okay. Down. down. So. Right. Uh, how right. fast the particles of fiber twist around the circle is equal to its electrical charge. So... How fast does it mean? How many times? Yeah, how many turns mean? before it comes back? You know, like, a, like you can have like 100 turns or 20 turns, so, so that would decide it. Yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole circle, and oh yeah, so there is this and there is this. So, uh, so there is a difference. I wanted to. That's why I wanted to. Okay, so it says wrap around the circle of fiber optic electron. Okay, so maybe I should talk from the beginning. The fiber bond of electromagnetism, for example, describes the electromagnetism magnetic field as being made up of circles attached to every point of space-time. Uh, so crucially, each circle can rotate a little, uh, uh, each circle can rotate a little relative to its space-time neighbors. The so-called connection field of a fiber bundle describes how neighboring fibers are related by these sim uh, symmetry rotations. The electric and magnetic force field field Filling space-time corresponds to the curvature of the fiber bundle geometrically. 
And so the electric and the magnetic field are how the circular fibers twist over time and space. And uh, so, so the electric and magnetic, magnetic field is how the circular fibers twist and then the circular fibers also is uh, the circular fibers twist also it, uh, around other circles and those circles are the space-time kind of circles. Who wrote that? This is Gary Lee's uh, lay people kind of version of describing electromagnetism. Okay, so an electromagnetic wave is the undulation of circles over space-time. One quantum of an electromagnetic wave, a photon, is a propagating particle of light. Each kind of elementary particle corresponds to a different fiber over space-time. All the electrons of the world um, result from the twisting of a single kind of fiber, explaining, among other things, why all electrons are identical. The fibers of electrically charged particles, such as the electron, wrap around the circular fibers of electromagnetism like a thread around a screw. How fast the particle's fiber twist around the circle is equal to its electro electric charge, determining how the particle corresponds to the force of electromagnetism. Because twist must meet around the circle, these charges are integer multiples of some standard unit of electric charge. Oh, okay, so, so that the twist, so the twist should be this, should be how many times, you know, these, like, for example, this is like, looks like three times. Yeah. Yeah, right. So this is electron fiber, and this is electromagnetism fiber. How many, how many twists does each line go through in the 30 rings? How many times does each one wrap? Because uh, we know I saw it's there's three a three, five. Three and five periodicity. Yeah, there's a three and a five, uh, depending on how we look at it, the center or you know other things. So. So is that illustration that you had on the screen from Garrett Lisi? Yeah. So there must is there probably a reason why it's three? Yeah, that's three. It talks about the three there, and then these I remember these small circles are somehow related to the mass. This is what I remember what he talks about. You know, he doesn't deal with the six hundred cells, so maybe the three relates to the six hundred cell three. Well, the three because because the charge only have those values, I think. So, cause, because twist must meet around the circle, these charges are integer multiples of standard unit of electron charge. Of the elementary matter particles called the fermions, electrons have electrical charge minus one, which is a three twist. Okay, so every, so I guess for three twist uh, corresponds to minus one. So up quark has the charge two to the three, so two opposite to twist, because that's a minus, this is a plus, so that three twist the clockwise, this will be, you know, yes, anti-clockwise too. One yeah. Twist plus zero. <laughs> yeah. So neutrons have zero twist. The antimatter particles such as positrons and antiquarks have twist in the opposite direction around the electromagnetic circle, giving them the opposite electric charges. When particles collide, they may be converted into new types, but the outgoing particles have exactly the same total charge as the incoming ones did. This crucial fact is a consequence of fiber geometry. When any two particles meet, they are twisted at. In this way, the fiber bundle picture explains what we know about electromagnetism. The electric charges describe the geometrical structure of the combined electromagnetic and matter fiber bundle, determining what interactions are possible between electrically charged particles. So yeah, that, this is what I said. I think he talks about these kind of twists that correspond to mass, and this twist around the circle corresponds to the charge. Uh, so so these, these are not related to that, so. Anyway, so the last thing I want to talk is the 240 polytope. This is the one picture of it. Um, 
do I have? Yeah, this is the paper that I'm interested in. It's talking about how 240 uh, polytope is related to, you know, to the 335 and also the, I think it talks about also the geometric of frustration almost, kind of the or, or loops. It talks about the self-similar hierarchical modular loops as a result of uh, corresponding rolling operations on the 240 polytope. It's pretty complicated to itself on this part, so I don't want it to kind of squeeze it here, but if we're interested, then we can but it, look but more. But it seems interesting because it's not about crystal symmetries, it's about, the, it's fundamentally related to the 4D icosahedron, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's a quasi-crystal kind of thing. It, so yeah, totally. It sounds like we should check it out. Yeah, I look at this, it's just like if we, you know, it's, it's talking about the op operators, the binary operators, basically. So how the binary, uh, how the binary operations kind of uh, relate, uh, correspond to second order symmetry elements and defines the local atomic interactions. And then so this paper, because, because any reference that I want to find is written in Russian. So I, it's uh, hard for me to understand a certain part. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's in a book, it's a chapter of a book. Translations, even efficient translations, is not really expensive. Have you tried? $10. Oh, oh yeah, you can hire people to translate for pretty cheap. Yeah, I, I feel like I couldn't even get to the particle, uh, articles. It's not like uh, huh. I can get them. It's like uh, it's, uh, the reference is in, re, uh, in Russian, but I can't, and there is no you way for, for me to access them. them. What about Sci-Hub? It's, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't, I don't know. Difficulties. Yeah, it's not, it's. Right, it's like I don't even know it's DOI number or anything, yeah. So anyway, so I wanted to, f uh, in the end, show, it's gonna be the, almost the last thing. This so is let a, me, let me this is you a- really wanna look at it from, because Sci-Hub contains Russian journals <laughs> and you don't need the DOI number for- I only bring it up is because I don't know if we're gonna spend time on yeah, this. Yeah, but if you do. Yeah, so anyway, so this is a, a model that I made that it's a, so kind of like um, a 200, uh, like a f this is a five sets of, um, um, let me see, so if I should, so set one and set two, set one left and right. So that's five sets of uh, uh, 600, yes, no, so, um, this is uh, like we know like uh, if we put five sets of 600 cell together we can get a 120 cell because 600 cell has 120 vertices so if we put five sets together they form a 120 cell which has 600 cell 600 t vertices and then how they put together you know it's kind of like the 20 group twist kind of thing they they kind of uh, mix together with each other, you know, in this kind of twist, and then that kind of twist angle is exactly the the 22.2, the jitterbug angle. But then there is a slightly kind of a translation there, so it's kind of a screw rotation, skew rotation, and then so, and then. But if we select any two 600 cell, and they actually form a, two, a 240 polytope. So now you know the 240 polytope is a chiral. It's, it has a chirality built right. in itself. Right. Yeah. So. But you can make it either chirality, right? Yes. Right. And then also for the 600 cell, you know, when you put them together, this is right and left also. So this is a two, is this two set? It's hard to see. Uh, I think 200 polytope, 240 cell. Hmm. So is there another 240? 
Is there any correspondence between the 20 group twist and that? Because some of the points look similar. Composite 20 groups. Did you check that for me? What? Is there a correspondence between the 20 group twist and the, and the points that make this? Um. Like the projection no. of this on your paper. There no, I didn't check that. You didn't check? No. But well, I wanted to show one thing here because 200, 240 cell, 157 group, 200. All right, so this one. I wanted to show this is. So, for example, the yellow, the yellow icosahedron belongs to one 600 cell, the red belongs to another one. Because you know in 600 cell, right, it's made of all the tetrahedron, and the 20 tetrahedron together would form an, an icosahedron. So this is from one 600 cell, this is from another. So you can see the kind of rotation between them is, the, is this angle, this 22 you know, jitterbug angle. Jitterbug. And exactly. also there is a translation between them, so it's kind of a skew so projection. Same angle exact same angle. Okay, so um, these are made of equilateral tetrahedron? Uh, this in S3? In, in S3, yes. Okay, yeah. so, so S3 is bent in such a way to close the gaps that the jitterbug would... Yeah, so, you, so imagine this is, there's a three sphere, there's another three sphere, Okay, this is a 600 cell. So you twist the 600 cell. When you twist the 600 cell, and there is a translation, but at the same time there is a skew rotation between, you know, there it's you know it's clusters. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and Dugan, I'm always looking for people to 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 buy into this importance that I say that. When you bend the three-dimensional space with the 20 tetrahedra and you have the gaps, if you keep curving the three-dimensional space relative to the radius of a sphere that yeah. contains them, you keep bending it and then you're going to close up the gaps, right, as you curve it. And you keep going and you keep going. And if you ask yourself, well, at what, what is the magnitude of the three-dimensional curvature that completely closes it and makes it like that? Like in, right. And the magnitude is 1 over 5. It's really a pretty... Yeah, the 600 cell has a curvature of 1 over 5. And then if you uncurve it, then it introduces the rotation. And at the maximum of perfect flat Euclidean 3 space, then the rotation has to become 15.522. Mm -hmm. So there's those two numbers are sort of inversely proportional to me. In yeah. some so I don't have a cosahedron here, but just imagine a cosahedron. There's one right there. Uh, oh, or 20 group. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, this. Well, actually, I think uh, we made this really nicely. So there, imagine this is a cosahedron, and this is another cosahedron. They have a relative rotation with each other. And so from here, you know, you can see, um, you know, if, you, if this is the original one, you, you, you rotated the, the, it, you rotated the original one, so it then becomes this green one. So then there is a relative kind of rotate. So, so then you have, for example, this, around this point, you have this kind of pentagon set, and around this, there is a pentagon set. So you can see from this pentagon and this pentagon, there is a translation. And then there is, here it seems, um, it's hard to look at the rotation, but in that one, you know, you can see this yellow, if, if the yellow is the original, um, the, these 20 cluster, 20, uh, these 20 tetrahedron is on the original 600 cell, and then after the rotation, it becomes the red. You can see there is translation, and also there is this ro rotation here. So, and then together, the yellow set, which is, you know, the a whole 600 cell, this is only one little part of it around one vertex. So this whole 600 cell and the red whole 600 cell together, they form a chiral object, which is a 240 polytope. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it, I think. <laughs> that's very good. Very good. <laughs>
very, very kind of sophisticated geometry. Yeah. Right. Next time we're going to talk about the pole and quasi crystal because that's important to learn because we always wanted to find this, this um, regularized version of the four dimensional quasi crystal. So that's a really a nice quasi crystal that we should consider.